I'm Kimberly of Happy Gals Vintage. I want to thank you for checking out my video today about vintage teacups and how to choose a good vintage teacup for your collection. And this is a whole series of videos all about vintage teacups. And today we're specifically talking about the good things that you want to you want to really look out for when you are searching for a vintage teacup for your collection. So let's get started. One of the first things you might want to consider is the maker of the teacup or the company that manufactured the teacup. There are lots of really great makers out there from all over the world, high quality porcelain manufacturers, and um, I have a whole nother video just specifically about makers, so you can check that out if you want to really get in depth about learning about the makers of teacups. But many people will collect teacups based only on the makers, so they will only select teacups from one particular maker that they really like, that they really enjoy. For instance, I'm holding a Royal Albert teacup, and Royal Albert teacups are very collectible, and also Ainsley. Um, this is an Ainsley teacup right here. And, you know, Royal Albert and Ainsley are just known for their high quality teacups. They've been making porcelain items and porcelain teacups for a very long time. They have really high quality designs, um, beautiful workmanship, just very nice, nicely made teacups. Another thing is the country of origin. So where was the teacup made? Uh, teacups are made all over the world and have been for a very long time. And uh, you may want to choose a tea teacups only from certain locations uh, to give your collection an overall look or feeling. And for instance, Royal Albert and Ainsley are both English companies and England has a long history of very fine porcelain manufacturing. So a collection of English teacups would be wonderful. France also has a history of porcelain um, and teacups. And Japanese teacups are very unique. They have a whole different look, like this one for instance. And We'll talk a little bit more about this one a little bit later. And German, German teacups. I really like the German teacups myself, and I specifically like Bavarian porcelain. And I have these two little demi toss in my shop right now, in my Happy Gals Vintage shop. And I think they're just beautiful. There's something about Bavarian porcelain. It's very sort of regal looking, um, ornate. There's a lot of fine gold detailing on it and sort of lace-like gold finishes. And the colors are just beautiful. I, I believe Bavarian porcelain has just some really unique and, and pretty colors that you don't always see in other teacups. So that's another, another thing that you can be looking for when you're purchasing vintage teacups for your collection is teacups from various parts of the world. Then there are also things like special finishes that make a teacup more interesting and sometimes more collectible. For instance, lusterware is a finish, oh, here's one right in front of me. Lusterware is a finish that uh, was popular more in the 1950s and maybe a little in the 40s too. And it is a finish that is sort of a pearlescent, a luminescent sort of, um, finish on the teacup. So it's almost like if you've ever seen the inside of an abalone shell and they're very sort of shiny, um, they're really quite pretty. So some people like to collect the lusterware sets and I think they're a lot of fun. They tend to be more ornate um, than a lot of other teacups. And many of the the lusterware teacups and other teacups also um, will have um, very ornate handles, right? So that can be something that you might want to look for when you are shopping for a vintage teacup is a handle that's a little different from what you've seen, um, just sort of the standard teacup handles that you see over and over again. This little tiny demi toss that I have in my shop right now is adorable um, and it has a really interesting and unique handle, which you don't see all the time. Um, 
or this one right here. Really beautiful on this little demi tasse. It's a hand painted demi tasse set from Japan that's in my shop right now as well. For also, there's something called moriage, which is popular in, on Japanese porcelain and Japanese teacups, where they actually have a finish, a raised sort of embossed porcelain that is squeezed out onto the, the surface of the teacup and then allowed to dry um, in these amazing elaborate designs. Um, this one is a dragon teacup from Japan, vintage dragon teacup, and oh my goodness, they're just so much fun, there's so much detail. When you can find a nice moriage that hasn't, doesn't have damage um, to it, and where you can really still see the design, they, they can be very highly collectible. Uh, the other thing you might look for, um, you know, other than a fancy handle, is also a fancy articulated uh, saucer. And that just simply means that there have been sort of these lace-like holes cut into the saucer that makes it a little more interesting. <laughs> Those um, can make a teacup more collectible as well. I have a few sets right now. Most of them are lusterware as well with these really fancy saucers that are a lot of fun. Another thing that you might like to collect, that you might look for when collecting vintage teacups, is the little feet that are on some teacups. Um, it's just these little tiny feet and then the teacup stands on the feet, right? So it just makes it a little more interesting, a little different from your average teacup, a little fancier. That is another fun addition that you might look for when collecting vintage teacups is uh, fancy feet. Also, hand painting can make a teacup more collectible and more desirable and have a little more value to it. This is a little Japanese teacup that's in my shop right now that has quite a bit of hand painting on it. Hand painted roses that are accented in gold. Um, this is quite a pretty little set. And if you find um, a hand painted set, sometimes it's hard to tell, but if you sort of can, um, often you can actually feel the raised paint, a very gentle and delicate. Um, when you touch it, you can actually feel that it's raised off the, off the plate or off the teacup. It can be difficult to find a hand painted teacup that is vintage or antique that hasn't had some damage to the hand painting. So if you find one, where all the hand painting is intact, um, that makes it even more valuable and collectible. And if you also find a hand painted teacup that is signed or initialed on the bottom by the artist, that makes it even more collectible still. Some teacup companies also will make limited edition teacups, and so that means that they only make a, tea, a certain teacup design. Um, for a certain amount of time or a certain number of teacups is made and that's it. And so on the bottom of the teacup there will be usually a number um, or a number with a slash and another number which is to signify that it is number 100 of 2000 or something like that, right? And the lower the number um, that is the second number in the series, then that means the more collectible the item is because there were fewer made. So limited edition teacups can be fun to collect, although they can also be hard to find. So when you find one, know that you have really got something there. Some companies also will make a series of teacups. Um, Royal Albert, for instance, this is a teacup from Royal Albert. It is not in a series. This one is called Prairie Rose, so they actually title their teacups, Royal Albert does. But they also will do something where they make a series of teacups, so they have like a flower of the month where each um, month has a specific flower that they feature on the teacup, and they'll have the month inside the teacup, um, and then different flowers for every month. And so those can be a lot of fun to collect if you can actually find every one of them in the series. Um, that will be quite a feat. <laughs> Another thing that you might want to look for when shopping for vintage teacups is unusual colors or designs. 
Many teacups are made in sort of pastel colors. There's a lot of beautiful white with, that really accents the, the designs of the flowers, um, the designs of like little scenes, you know. There's all types of pretty designs that are common on vintage teacups. You know, pastel yellows are common, pastel pinks, pastel greens, um, blues, and they're all beautiful. However, if you find a teacup in a really dramatic, bright, or darker shade or hue, um, that teacup is more collectible. Now, I have found this through my own shop, my Happy Girls Vintage Shop online, where I sell lots and lots of teacups and have for many years, that if I get a teacup in a really like bold um, or bright or intense color, that is unlike all the other teacups that um, are out there. But those teacups tend to sell pretty quickly. <laughs> they don't last very long in my shop. So something like this, I've just gotten this one in, so I haven't had it very long. This is a Royal Grafton. It's a fine bone china in this fabulous, like bright Christmas red, right? Um, and it's unique, right? When I saw this, I was like, oh, gotta have that one because um, it just speaks to us, these intense colors. And the other thing that is high, the other color that is highly collectible is, believe it or not, black. So if you come across a vintage teacup in black, um, or maybe the outside is black and the inside is a different color, um, or the, other, the opposite way, um, those are highly collectible. So anytime I get black teacups in my shop, they last about a day and then they're gone again. And the reason why is that not very many porcelain makers actually create black teacups. But when they do, they're so dramatic, they're so beautiful. Special colors, definitely look for those when you're shopping for vintage teacups. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about that you should look for when you're shopping for a vintage teacup is the very old or antique teacups. Now vintage generally means that an item is 25 years old or older. Antique means that an item is 100 years old or older. And I sell mostly vintage items in my shop, but I do get antique items now and then. And mostly it's because it's just much harder to come up across antique items, right? And antique teacups, they tend to eventually break um, or get lost and they just don't stick around that long. So when you do actually come across an older antique um, item, then definitely those are collectible, right? And even if there is some a little bit of damage here and there on the item, it could still be highly collectible. If there isn't damage, then it's even more collectible. I have this little antique teacup in my shop right now. It's a Havilland Limoges. Um, and you can tell by the design and the way that the design was applied that this is an antique teacup, um, probably very early 1900s, I would guess. And it has been kept in absolutely exquisite, excellent condition. Um, so it does not look as old as it actually is. <laughs> um, but it is quite beautiful. Okay, so those are some things that I look for when I'm shopping for vintage teacups. And if you have some things that you also look for that I didn't mention, um, please comment on this video and let everybody know. I always like to hear what everyone has to say and other tips and things that I forgot. Um, so feel free to comment. And also, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like this video. That'll get it out to more people on YouTube and more people can have fun um, learning about vintage teacups. And if you would like to subscribe to our channel, I would appreciate that as well. And if you hit the little bell notification, you will be notified whenever we come out with a new video. And we have a series of teacup videos that talk all about how to choose a vintage teacup. And we also have a series of videos about uh, ways to be happier in life. Simple, affordable, easy, fun ways that you can just add more happiness to your life every day. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.